Greetings fellow conspirators, Martyrs Vale here, and welcome back to more Ethos modded Minecraft. On the last episode, and on many of the previous episodes, we've been working on our ME system that's going to be do all of our crafting and storage and a whole bunch of really cool stuff in a really compact space. And I've uh, been doing pretty good so far, I think, and I like our project. As you can see, we've got a power block here and an ME block here, and that's pretty much everything important in our base. Uh, and today, I'm going to work a little bit more on getting the Emmy crafting side set up. So last episode, we worked on an auto-inscriber set up, and actually, let me show you guys what that looks like in case you missed it. And of course, if you did miss it and you want to see how I built it, then feel free to check out the video. Uh, but basically, this thing right here and this setup right here are going to make all the different processors that we need in order to craft any sort of AE uh, devices. So that's pretty cool. Um, but there is some more AE unique crafting requirements that we're going to have to meet if we want a truly wide and comprehensive setup. So that is this block of water here. <laughs> um, yeah, surprise, surprise, right? It doesn't really look all that high tech, but actually it is. So uh, if you don't know AE2, one of the few things that you're going to need is a block of water. And it, it, that's how you make some of the things that you need. Specifically, Flux crystals are made with nether quartz, redstone, and a charged Certus quartz crystal. Throw those in some water, magic happens, and boom, you get some Flux crystals. That's pretty cool, and then these are used for crafting. Um, however, you know, you need your Flux crystals, you need your Certus quartz crystals, uh, but you can kind of run out of those kind of fast. And so a way to almost double your usages is by making seeds. So actually, let me show you guys how this works. So you can make a pure version of these crystals, the pure Certus Quartz, pure Flux, and pure Nether Quartz, by crafting seeds and putting those in water. So you make a seed, um, and the seeds are actually pretty easy to make as well. You just need to combine sand with the dust of whichever form that you want. So it's just sand and this Certus Quartz dust, and the dust you just get from grinding up the Certus Quartz. And that'll give you two seeds, and then each seed makes a pure crystal. So you can basically turn each regular crystal into two crystals uh, for basically the cost of just a little bit of power. Now you can't in turn grind up the pure Certus Quartz to make even more and just have an endless cycle of constantly infinite um, Certus Quartz, but it, it does give you a good range of stuff. It extends your resources. And um, a few things you can only craft with the pure versions, so you do need these things. Uh, but the problem is that that's something that interacts with the environment, right? You need to actually toss stuff into this puddle of water to make it work. And by the way, these things um, are on the side are called crystal growth accelerators. Those just make the seeds grow faster. Um, it's The seeds are grow really, really slow if you don't have any of these things. But they just take some power and they speed up the growth of your crystal seeds. So, all of that is to say that today we're going to be working on an automated setup for that. So that I can just automatically craft something that requires those pure crystals and the system will automatically know how to do it. So let me review what we've got here. Um, I have some Certus Quartz Crystal stored, and I have a crafting recipe for the dust, and that is just in the sag mill. So all you have to do is put the Certus Quartz into there, and it grinds it up into some Certus Quartz dust. Then I've also encoded patterns to make the seeds, which are really simple, just the sand and the dust. And so now all we have to do is this part right here. So let me grab these things. They're kind of, I mean, they're not expensive by any means, but you do need, I think, eight fluics for each one, or eight pure fluics, anyways. Um, so, might as well, right? Never hurts to be thrifty. Alright, so there we go, and we're going to have five of these in our system. And actually, I guess I can disconnect this now. No longer required. Thank you for your services. Alright, let's get into the machine, and let's start building this thing. So, uh, to review, what we want out of this setup is not necessarily the fastest machines you could possibly make um, because fast usually means big. Um, we also are not looking for the cheapest machines because I'm, I'm relatively in game and I can afford some of the more expensive things. Uh, not necessarily even looking for the most efficient setups. What I'm looking for is the most space efficient setups. So anything that is super small um, and I can fit into this 13 by 13 space is what I really want because I want an entirely self-sufficient ME system in this cube here. 
So um, for instance, this inscriber setup could technically be more space efficient if I just use one inscriber, but then that would really, really limit the throughput of our system. So I did splurge a little bit of space on there, um, but we are gonna try to keep it compact. And I think we're gonna build it right here. I think we have enough room in this area. I have everything that we need in my inventory, so let's get started. All right, right off the bat, let's put down our different crystal growth accelerators into the configuration that we want them to be in. So this is going to be our block of water in the end. So I'm going to want one crystal growth accelerator on every single side. That looks good to me. So let's take that away. And now we need to rotate these so that they're facing the right way because um, they can only accept power from these sides and uh, they only work on these sides, if that makes any sense. So let me see if I can figure out how this goes. That works great. Um, that works good. Let's see, I want you to face this way, that way, and that way. Okay, cool. So now we have all these graded sides facing towards the center, and that's where the water is going to be. I'm not going to put that in until the end just because I know I'll probably mess something up. Uh, now let's get some cable going here to power the things. So in any case where this is going to be touching something else, for instance, the inscriber setup, I want to have a quartz fiber to make sure that no data gets transferred. So by placing a quartz fiber, that um, it allows power to transfer through the system, but it keeps data from transferring. So basically, anything that we connect over here is not going to add channels to this setup and vice versa. These channels are not going to be mixed up in this. We want two sort of completely separate systems, even though they are sort of sharing power. All right, uh, so let's hook that up. And once they're all hooked up, we should see, yes, they are all, use, or they've got power, they've got these particle effects, and really cool lightning stuff. So yeah, that looks good. All right, uh, next I'm going to, I guess I should probably, how sh what order should I do this? I guess I'll do it in reverse order. So let's assume that we've already created our product and it's in here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get it out of there. And to do that, we can do a neat trick with the transfer node from Extra Utilities. Let's plop one of those on the bottom and I want to make sure that that does not connect just in case, so there we go. It's not gonna connect to that inscriber. Now this, uh, this transfer node can actually suck items out through a block um, out from the world if it's got a few of these upgrades, and, but we'll install that later. So we're, we're going to assume that our items are going to come out that way, so we're going to need a transfer pipe. Let's put it on this side, I think, and one more should be good. Is that going to connect to that? Oh, it does. Um, can I, there we go, just use one of these. <laughs> could could do something a little bit more um, <laughs> a little bit nicer looking but that'll be fine for us just to prevent that from connecting to this this is actually just an energy conduit so I don't think that it would interfere with this system technically but I want to be super safe so I'm gonna do that now we're gonna need a chest so the chest is gonna go right here and that connects great so any of the completed crystals that we have are going to come out the bottom here into this chest then we can grab ourselves an import bus to import it into an ME system and bring that up this way. So that connects there, nice. Can connect that there. And let me see, I'm going to want, actually I'm probably gonna want some quartz fiber there, aren't I? Yeah, okay. So this is just gonna introduce it back up to the system. So now we can start actually putting the, the uh, seeds and the crystals in here. So we've got an interface that's going to connect it to the system and we're going to need something to dump it into here. And so we can actually end up using, let me make sure that this is not going to connect. Uh, where is my quartz fiber? There it is. So do that. And there we go. So that means that power will transfer through, but the data won't because uh, I don't want the data going through that way. Now, all we need to do is actually we need these. Let's put one in there and grab ourselves the formation plane. Oh no, have, have I trapped myself? I have. <laughs> Whoops. Have to be able to get out. All right, there we go. And we need a formation plane, which is this thing. And this allows for interaction with the world. And basically what it'll do is if we gave it some sort of block, it would put the block in this um, space. If we gave it an item, it'll just drop the item into the world. So what's gonna happen is this system's going to receive, like I'm gonna say, hey, craft me up some Flux crystals, and so the flux crystals are going to go into this interface, get dropped out of the formation um, plane, 
then they're going to sit in here for a little bit until they turn into flux crystals, get extracted out the bottom, and be put back up into the system. Okay, that looks good to me. So now uh, we do need one another interface, and that's, that's a little bit complicated. I'll try to explain that later. But now we can just grab ourselves one of those, make sure that these connect. Um, I can actually be cheap here and you just use this stuff. Okay, that is good. So now, um, let me try to explain how this works using the channels. There we go. So we have this connected up to our MU controller, so this system is now live. And basically what's happening here is, if you'll notice, we only have two channels used. And that's kind of weird, right? Because we have one, two interfaces, we have a formation plane, that uses up a channel, and we also have an export bus, or an import bus down here. That's four channels, but this is only showing two. So you might be wondering, how is, how is this working? How are you getting away with that? And basically, the way this works is we have a really tiny sub network here. So the formation core or the formation plane and this interface, the block one, they're not actually connected to this power or to this um, data line. They're connected through power lines using these quartz fibers, but um, they're not actually directly connected to the data. The only way they are connected is through this separate interface right here. So really the only two things that are using up channels on this line are going to be this um, facade or panel interface and this import bus. So these two things are not using up channels, which is kind of nice. So now all we need to do is set this up to take out items from there and set up the interface to tell it when to craft items. And to do that we are going to need some of the completed stuff. So we're going to need one Fluix Crystal, we're going to need a pure version of that, a pure Certus Quartz, and a pure Nether Quartz. And now we can use some upgrades for the transfer node from Extra Utilities. Uh, one of these is called an item filter. So you just right click and you tell it, hey, I want you to get this stuff here. So only get this, do not interact with anything else. So if it sees the seeds or the ingredients for the flux crystals, it's not going to try to suck those out of there. It's only going to suck out the completed products, which is exactly what we want. So that is part number one. Then um, we also need it to actually interact with the world. So usually these transfer nodes, they only interact with inventories like chests. So to get it to actually recognize the items out in the world, we need a world interaction upgrade. And we actually need two of them in order for it to extend the range up into this block right here. Otherwise it would fall short. Awesome. And now finally I'm going I'm to use a stack upgrade just in case I make a whole ton of them all at once. And I need to say, hey, pull out a lot of them because otherwise it only takes one at a time. All right, that is looking good. Now we just need to plop our encoded patterns here into the back, into this interface, not this one. Um, and what these are going to do, I've already encoded these to say one um, seed creates one pure crystal. And same thing for this one, same thing for this one. And this one I've just said one charged quartz, one redstone, one another quartz, that's equals two flux crystals. So we can plop those in here. And technically, once we put the water in, that is a necessary component, technically the system should be live now. So, you wanna give it a try? Let's give it a try. Let's put all that stuff away that we don't need anymore. And let's say, okay, I don't have any Flux Crystals. I want you to craft me one Flux Crystal. Let's go to next. We have a um, crafting CPU. So it's gonna use one Nether Quartz, one Charge Certus Quartz, and one redstone to create two flux crystals. So, whoops, <laughs> once I hit start, we should see that stuff. Yep, it fell into here. That's gonna turn into the flux crystal. Automatically got sucked out of there into the chest. Chest pumped it back out into the system and it's in here. Awesome, that is fantastic. So we could say, hey, I want, um, actually, Let's tell it that we want some nether quartz, right? So we can say, craft me up one of these. And I already do have a seed available, so we're gonna hit start. And so that should have put the seed into the system. Okay, so the seed is in there. You can see those particles, right? There's little tiny particles as the seed is growing. And let's actually, let's grab it so you can see. Um, it's 12% grown, and I think there's three stages of growth. So it's going to take a while, right? And that's why we need all of these crystal growth accelerators. We've got five on this thing to help it grow. And the more you have, the obviously the faster it grows. They do use up a good amount of power. So we should probably check that out. 
But yeah, that's that's our system. And so you'll notice the seed isn't getting sucked out of the system and it won't until it's fully grown. When it's fully grown, it'll be a pure crystal. And then this thing will say, oh, I'm looking for pure crystals. It'll grab it, put it in the chest, put it back in the system. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our auto crafting system for the different types of crystals. I am going to put a couple of these slabs in here. Um, I, As far as I've tested, it's never tried to drop it outside of this area, but just to be safe, I don't want that accidentally spilling out. So I'll put another slab here once we're done, but that'll be it. And we can just, whenever we call for something, it'll make it in there. So let's actually review. Let's say that we wanted to make, oh, I don't know, an ME interface. Um, an ME interface, I believe takes some sort of crystal. Actually, I'm not even sure because I haven't crafted one by hand in so long. Let's check. If we wanted an interface to add onto our system, um, the interface is crafted with formation cores and these take um, a, either, I'm always gonna be using the pure version just to be more um, more environmentally friendly, use less resources and be more efficient. So that's gonna take that and the Fluix dust. So the system's gonna be like, okay, to make the Fluix dust, I need to send a Fluix crystal to the sag mill and grind it up. And I'm also going to need a pure crystal. So let's say it didn't have one of those. So it'd say, okay, to make one of these, I need a seed. To make a seed, I need to grind up a regular version. So grind up a regular version, craft that together with sand to make a seed, put the seed into this system and grow that into a pure crystal and eventually craft our ME interface. So there you go. That's a lot of steps, but it's going to do them all automatically, which is great. Not going to be super fast um, necessarily. I'm not going to have a lot of these on hand. I'm only going to be making them whenever I call for them, but I, I, I think it works out pretty well. I like it a lot. And plus, the main thing is that it's really compact. Like this is a pretty tiny area, honestly, to be making um, all of the different crystals that we need, which is pretty cool. So let me go make sure that this isn't going to be draining our system unduly, right? Because if we check back on our power system and we see that power is draining out of it, that means we're using up too much and we're going to have to implement some sort of feature to turn off the crystal growth accelerators when they're not being used. And I mean, technically that would be more power efficient, but since I have such an excess of power, I don't think I need to do that necessarily. But let's check, just to double check, just to be sure because the last thing I would want to do is run out of power. Because if I did, I wouldn't be able to access all of my stuff in the ME system, and that, that could be kind of a catastrophe. So let's see, first up, let's check out the capacitor bank, that's this thing, and that is holding steady, good. So the next thing that would be draining was this, eight, nine, okay, so that is increasing, that means that the power um, is not being drained out of these faster than it's being generated, and this is backed up with pumpkins. Good, okay. So technically, I think this is, would be the last area that would not back up, right? We would have, um, basically, if we started using power faster than it, then we could make it, these would still make power super fast, so they would, would be backed up, and eventually it would just fall back on the pumpkins not being able to grow fast enough. But they seem to be keeping up just fine, which means that our system is doing great. So, look at that, guys. Have we added anything? I mean, from out here, you couldn't tell. But uh, from in there, yeah, you definitely can. We've got a whole other aspect of the system complete. And I think the only ME, the only unique ME thing that we need to implement now is something to charge the crystals. And that is super easy, right? Because you can make um, these service quartz. Uh, you can find these regular service quartz out in the world. You can find these out in the world very rarely, but you do need them for some recipes, like the Fluix crystal, for example. So to charge them, you just need one of these chargers, and you just pop in a regular crystal. Let me actually grab one to demonstrate. Just pop it in. It'll charge, and then once it's done charging, you can take it back out. Pretty simple. Um, and I'll, I'll probably do that next episode. I don't think it'll take too long, but I might be able to you know, make a pretty neat setup. Again, trying to be space efficient with these things, so I'm not gonna create a huge wall of them. I need to be relatively space efficient. Anyways, guys, uh, that is it for this episode. We made something pretty neat that I like. Uh, this is similar to a lot of other people's designs, but I, I always try to put my own spin on things, um, and I really like the way this turned out. Very compact, um, but it works well for our system, so I like it a lot. Anyways, that is going to be about it for this video. Hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, if you did, then please hit that like button and consider subscribing. 
and I will see you guys in the next video.